Hi guys and welcome to TechSimGB. In this video we're going to be covering OBS and how to set it up and a few troubleshooting issues that I've had and how to resolve them with streaming games and a few other bits and pieces. Let's start off with going through the settings menu as this is kind of where a lot of your key things that you need to set up to start streaming kind of are hidden. Now the general settings you don't tend to touch, the only ones that I normally look at are these, so automatically recording when streaming if you want to recreate a local copy and then if for whatever reason you want to keep the recording going after you press the stop streaming button you can also add that too. Now the main one if you're planning on streaming with OBS is to set up your stream key here. If you're streaming to Twitch then all you do is leave it on streaming services, select Twitch from this list, put your stream key in which I won't be showing mine uh, and then uh, you're all good to go. You can also select different things like YouTube or create a custom streaming server if you need to as well um, and that is what you would uh, you'd be using. Now under the output tab this is uh, where a lot of the, the magic happens. So again, I've left it on simple here because that's the easiest one to go. You can go to advanced, but if you're watching this video, you probably should stay on the simple side. So let's go through it. The first thing is the video bitrate, and this one is the the thing that the the amount of data you are encoding at a given second. And for Twitch, they recommend 6,000 kilobits per second, which is what this is. The next tab is the encoder. So if you use, if you want to use your graphics card, in this case I have an Nvidia graphics card, so it's NVENC. But if you're using an AMD card, then it's VCE. But either way, it's your graphics card's encoder, or you can use your CPU, which is the X264 encoder, which most people say is a better overall quality. You can also, obviously, that that will affect your game uh, gameplay performance. But feel free to take a look at the plenty of videos I've done on that. Now obviously audio bitrate is just the bitrate for you know your audio and how high quality you want it to be. I think 160 is the default and it's generally fine. I do actually have this checkbox for enabled advanced coder settings enabled so that I can show people what uh, CPU encoder I am using for my stream benchmarks, but generally speaking this would be off and so you don't need to see it, but in this case it's set to very fast. Under the recording options, you can save where you want your files, to, uh, you know, your local recordings to be saved. And then this is normally set as same as stream, which means that it's just creating, in this case, an MP4 file of the, uh, you know, actual stream. Whereas if you change this to, say, indistinguishable quality, that means that it has to re-encode the same stuff for both stream and locally which is a lot harder of a thing to do. You can use, say, a different encoder. So if you're using software for your stream, you can use hardware for your local recording or vice versa if you fancy, which will help your performance. But if you choose to use uh, software x.264 in both times, uh, both instances, that will significantly impact your gameplay performance. Make sure you hit apply when you do any of these changes, by the way. Um, obviously, with audio, you can change things like delays, which are quite useful if, say, your webcam doesn't quite sync or takes a little bit longer to you know actually give the signal back to OBS and you can also change what devices you have and then in this video tab is actually where a fairly important thing lies first of all your FPS values but more importantly than that your base canvas and your output uh, resolution so in this case my base canvas is the display resolution which is 4k or 3840 by 2160 and then my output resolution is being downscaled to 1080p if I was actually recording with OBS to do this, this would be the same resolution. Um, but obviously, bearing in mind what your display input source is, so in this case my display is a 4K display, I want that to be 4K so that I can capture that, but then I'll have it downscaled uh, nice and easily to 1080p for, say, streaming, for example. Now that you've got the settings page all set up how you need it, let's take a look at adding new scenes and new sources. Now, setting up the, the rest of this, we're going to do a new scene, which is the left hand side button here with the little plus you can also right click if you fancy I'm just gonna leave this as scene 4 because my keyboard is a cherry MX blue and very clicky um, but you can obviously name this whatever you like and then to get something actually up on screen that is the sources tab and again you can use the plus or you can right click and do add if you want to say capture your display for say a video recording like this one then you just go to display capture I already have a couple existing ones which help with transitions between different scenes where you're using the same thing but 
but I'm just going to do a new one for the sake of this. And as you can see, we have our display, which is a 3840 by 2160 display at 00, zero and it automatically populates our base canvas for us. Now, if you want to capture games, you're going to want to do a game capture. And again, I have an existing one, but we're just going to leave that. And then if you leave this on capture any full screen application, any application that goes full screen and takes over your display should in theory be captured just fine. Now I would make sure that you do some tests with this to make sure that it is actually capturing the game and works fine. There are a few different options, so you can do SLI and crossfire capability at, uh, capture mode, um, or you can force scaling for a display resolution specifically, also allow transparency, limit capture frame rate and things like that. And also if you're using a third party overlay, you can also get OBS to capture that as well. Uh, but do make sure that it is actually capturing your game. Sometimes it doesn't and you can go for the capture specific window where you can then select the game once it's open. Um, and that can improve compatibility a little bit. Otherwise, there are a few other options and this kind of brings us into the troubleshooting area for especially game capture. Now that you've got your scene set up, let's take a look at the audio setup as this is actually pretty cool. This is your audio mixer down here and as you can see, my microphone is jumping up and down here. Uh, I, I'm not actually recording with OBS, but it does still pick it up and I find that OBS has one of the best uh, kind of audio mixer setups here just for, for things like live streaming very easily. It shows you where your levels are constantly, your average level and your peak level. You can change the slider for your volume and you can add filters as well, which are fantastic. I use this for uh, my weekly live streams and just things like the, the noise suppression and noise gate where you can very easily add just like that and slightly fine tune and then go back, add a noise gate, and again, slightly fine tune what your thresholds are, whatever, and press it back to defaults so if you really don't like it, and there you go, your you know setup is, is nice and easy and working for you. You can also have desktop audio, and you can have multiple uh, other audio devices as well, so if you have, say, multiple microphones and you're recording, you know, a table session with friends or whatever, um, you know, that will still all work, and you can still mix that, so one friend is louder you can just slide their mic down a wee bit and it'll be just fine so again really impressive and very in, uh, easy and enjoyable to use. So now that you've got your game streaming set up but you're trying to stream a certain game and it just isn't working for you the game capture in the normal capture any wind foreground window method just isn't working. Well the first thing you should try is switching to the capture specific window and then selecting your game while it's open to capture that explicit window. If if that still doesn't work, then I would try setting your game to borderless windowed mode, which means that, well, to you, the, the visual sort of experience should still very much be a full screen, you know, completely covering your display game. To all of the software behind it, it's not a full screen application, and you can use the display capture method to capture that game. Now, in theory, that may be a little bit of a performance hit to your gameplay experience, but if it's the only way that's going to work, you're going to have to just deal with that. And finally, if you just cannot get it to work at all, then the only other option that I've found that works is to set it to a normally lower resolution. So if you're on a, say, 1440p monitor, running the game at 1080p in windowed mode, and then using the display capture method in OBS and resizing your display capture so that your game window is your full OBS window or full OBS canvas, and then going through it that way. That is generally the worst experience out of all of them as you don't get to play your game full screen and it means that in theory you're not streaming at the full resolution you might otherwise be able to but at the same time again if it's the only way you can stream out a certain game that you really want to be streaming right now then that's an option for you so i think that kind of rounds out the, the at least the, the first set of kind of setup you know basic setup and any uh, kind of troubleshooting tips and tricks that i've found when trying to stream and benchmark a lot of the games that i have done so if you have any questions or you have any other tips if you are a streamer and you've encountered other problems that uh, you know you need to fix in a certain way leave those in the comments down below if you are a member of the community and you see a question is unanswered I'd be very grateful if you could answer them as best as possible as I might not necessarily know every answer and I will try and get back to as many of them as I can but again if you know the answer please do answer them in the comments down below 
Otherwise, thank you for being an awesome member of this community. Obviously, if you are new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more videos, mostly on PC gaming hardware every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and occasionally Saturdays for tech FAQs, and also weekly uh, kind of tech chat live streams on Thursdays as well. You can check out the other videos over here if you want to support the channel. There are a load of links in the description down below, including Patreon where you can support me directly, or Amazon and Overclock Shikate affiliate links, which also massively help me out. Otherwise, as I said, if you have any questions or answers in the comments down below, leave them down there. And otherwise, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.